welcome back to Tremble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesdays. I'm Chris, trainer for Tremble Forensics, and this week we're piggybacking off of last week's episode on the NIST certified dual laser scanning target. Now we're going to jump into Trimble Realworks Forensic and show you how to use the target extraction tool to verify your scanner's measurement of the target right after the break. So since we have a scene from our Trimble X7 loaded into Trimble Realworks Forensic, this was part of a larger scene where we used the X7 to survey ground control points for UAV photogrammetry. Now, since the survey of our ground control is what our photogrammetry is based off of, we wanted to use the Trimble NIST certified dual laser scanning target to provide an additional layer of measurement validation. Now, you can see in the target sitting in the middle of our scene, and when we zoom in a bit, you can see that the targets were moved once between the beginning and the end of our scene. Now, for clarification, I'm only going to show the points from Station 7. And there we can see the targets on the tripod. If we use the measurement tool, we snap to one of the points in the cloud on one target and then snap to a point on the other target. This isn't a very good way to go about it since the points are a little sparse at this distance and the points we're picking are not as close to the physical center of the target as we would like them to be. What this does is this produces a measurement that indicates more error than what is actually there. So what do we do if there isn't a point in the exact center of the target? or maybe the contrast isn't quite high enough for our eyes to discern the target center. Let's select Station 7 and go to the Registration tab. There, you'll find a little button called the Target Analyzer in the Target-Based Registration section of the ribbon. When we click on it, the tool opens up on the right side of the window, and the UI reconfigures itself just a bit for the task ahead. Now, Our first step is to select which station has the best view of the target. In this case, we want to use Station 7. Now, since we haven't found any targets yet, we skip over the target list in the middle and jump down to step three and click extract. When the target creator window pops up, we need to select what target we're looking for. Now, if you're looking for a spherical target with a specific diameter, this would be a place that you would select that. But since the NIST certified scanning target is a flat black and white, let's select that instead. Our top window is showing the view from the point of station seven. So let's pan and zoom in a bit so that we can see our targets. Now just click in the approximate center of the target and RealWorks is going to isolate that area for us. Now you'll notice that the bottom window now has the isolated point cloud displayed for us. We can rotate it around and see that it's fairly close, but it could use a little bit of cleanup. To do this, we arrange our view and use the fitting toolbox to draw around the target itself and remove the clutter from the background and the target's hinge. Once we tell the software we want to keep what's inside the lasso, we click on the fitting button and the solution is computed. Here, I'm checking to make sure the target plane is fitted to the cloud correctly. Once I'm happy with it, I create the fitted target point and name it something that makes sense to me. Now, on to the second one. I clicked on the center of the target, but this time it doesn't quite recognize it quite as well. We need to help the software out a bit by isolating some of the outside points. After drawing a lasso around my target and telling the software to fit to the points inside the lasso, we're all set. Now, when I exit the target creation tool, we see two fitted targets appear in the list. Now, I click apply, and we're set. You now see that we have our fitted targets in the Station 7 object list. If I turn my point cloud off and turn on the visibility of NIST 1 and 2 targets, I can very easily see them on the screen. Now, when I take a measurement between the fitted points inside, it reads 0.9997 meters, or just over one one thousandth of an inch of error, when the NIST certified distance between the target centers is one meter. Of course, if you're in the field and want to use the Trimble X7's laser precision point feature and the laser pointer to put an annotation in the center of each target, that would work well also. External factors may determine which method is best for you. Just know the capability is there to take it as far as you need or want to go. We're standing with you to make sure that you have what you need to make sure your cases are solid. Now that wraps it up for this week. If this was helped to you, give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Stay safe, and I'll see you all again next week.